Well, hey everyone, this is Kevin DeWalt. I'm here with uh, Krish from Klingify. We're going to talk about how he and his company got early customers. Um, Krish, I am very excited to say we originally met uh, about a year ago. He was one of the companies in the Joyful Frog Digital Incubator, which is Singapore's uh, startup accelerator and one of the best programs that I've ever had a chance to work with. And uh, when I had a chance to work with Christian, his co-founder, meet with them and talk about what they were doing, I was really excited. So I'm not surprised to hear about all their their recent good news in the funding. And when I was in Singapore a couple weeks ago, I got a chance to see them uh, highlighted in the local paper, which is great to see. Um, so today, what we're going to talk about is. The, the challenges that he and his team had in trying to get into early customers, in particular, is like uh, these, in the case of small businesses. And what I find is a lot of what most founders don't realize how challenging it is to actually find and get these small businesses to pay attention to, even when you have a compelling solution and good technology. And so uh, we're going to hear from a company who managed to pull it off. So, Chris, thanks for joining. Hi, Kevin. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great, thanks. So first, like for everybody's benefit, just tell us like what is like, what does Clingify do real quickly? Um, elevator pitch. We are Evernote for private doctors in Asia. Uh, we are solving the problem of paper-based patient record management um, without changing the doctor's workflow process. That's what we do. Excellent. Okay, and so you were uh, so you you've been been around about two years now, right? Is that correct? Uh, the company has been around for two years. Uh, Clingify itself, the product has been around only for a year now. Great, excellent. And you had some good news recently with your funding announcement. You want to like sh sh share the share the sunshine with all of us? Absolutely. So we've been backed by Jungle Ventures, one of the top uh, VCs in Singapore. Uh, they, you know, they love the traction and they, they put us in front of doctors and they, they saw the magic when doctors play with our product and they immediately saw this as revolutionizing things here. And they believe that tablets will be the the way forward. Um, so you know, we're just happy that they backed us. Um, you know, we're using this money now to, to support all the doctors who we've been working with for the past one year. Excellent. All right. So when we first talked, wow, that's amazing. It's only been a, like you've made a ton of progress in a year. Like when I first talked to you a year, you were just struggling to figure. You were like at you know casting around. Like you had some ideas, but congratulations, man! You guys did great work. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Absolutely. When we met you exactly a year ago, you know, you, we told you, "Hey, Kevin, we are in the health industry, but we have <laughs> no idea what we're going to do." <laughs> and, you know, you told us you guys are in in trouble, but you gave us solid <laughs> advice. So thank you for that. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, I hope I helped at all, but it was it was all you guys. All right. So let's, for the benefit of all the new entrepreneurs that want to do something in the healthcare space and can't wait to start selling stuff to doctors, can you give us a sense of? What your expectation was an entrepreneur, what it was like to find these customers, get them to pay attention and get into work, and then and what it was actually like. So, you know, how was the reality from the expectation? Well, we so this is our first venture, and we started uh, started off um, as students uh, from the university, and you know we had a very distorted uh, perception of reality. You know, we thought we could just make calls and go in and say hi, what's up? You know, we have the cool tech kids, and you know you're gonna buy a cool product. But what turned out to be was that Doctors, you know, these people are very established, senior specialists, uh, some of the most recognized people in Asia. And for them, their time is money. Yeah. And they're, they're never going to trust you with anything until you show some form of, of credibility. Yeah. Uh, and you show, you know, unless you've done something. You, should, you need to have some form of history or some form of reputation. Otherwise, they're not going to entertain you at all. So you know, if I remember correctly, you you actually had that you had some pretty good relationships with your company. You weren't two guys off the street. You had some you had some very experienced doctors. Where you're, they were your advisors, they were mentors, or they were helping you do this, right? It wasn't just you, correct? That's right. Um, so well, it, it, it's two things. When when I met you, we already had established some relationship uh, via our first product. Yeah. So you know, we had the 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 budge head into the industry. That was that was when we met you. But before that, it was even much harder because. All we had was one doctor who, who was kind enough to support, believe, who believed in uh, us, basically. Yeah. And he was the top doctor, and he helped open doors, but you know, that only gets you so far. Yeah, right. Great point. I'm going to call that one. It only gets you so far. Everyone thinks, if I just had this magic sales guy, if I just had this guy on my board, uh, all my problems would be solved. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, people are so skeptical. Okay, so reality was... Uh, what was it like when you first started going out and just walking in the doctor's office? Like, would you like tell me what was it like, like day to day? Like, not only would you experience, but how did you feel about it? 
Um, I feel quite proud actually because you know I I used to do sales from directly to consumers and I thought it's the same. I've never done B two B sales. I've done mm-hmm. sales of hardware to, to people, but I've never done sales to, to businesses. And and uh, when you go in to, to such doctors or uh, such clinics or practices, you know they they pretty much are so sensitized. They don't treat you as a human. They just look at you as an object, and they're like, okay, bye. Right. You know? Yes. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like a punch to the face, and he just yeah. got. To you just got you, you know it was it was hard learning and then we realized hey you know what it's because they were not who they were not treated like humans and that's why they treated the same way yeah so what we did was we realized we need to start looking at them as humans as well um, so when we went in uh, instead of saying hey we're here to sell something or hey you know uh, we're going to, we're going to take money from you we just went in saying we want to find out what your problem is uh, mm-hmm. and we just want five minutes of your time nothing no sales promise no sales uh, you know if we sell to you then you can hold you can you know <laughs> you can you can hold us accountable and you know you, you can you can jail us or something <laughs> you know yeah. and and what we did was we said at the same time we understand you're helping us so we want to help you so if we have any problem we'd be happy to give you advice we'd be happy to solve your computer problems you know that's the least we could do and so let's the, let's just call this point out because they've always struggling to do simple things like sorting out emails and you know these are these are like five minute fixes for us for experienced people like us and I figured hey you know what they're wasting the time if I can help them then I build this relationship with them where one they trust me because I'm not going to charge them money and hence they look at me as a human first mm-hmm. and then secondly uh, because I'm doing them a favor they indebted to me. Uh, it was one of those things read from Robert Cialdini's books. Um, yep. Influence, fantastic book. Exactly, uh, Influence, yep. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, they spent more time with me because, you know, it was a conversation rather than a pitch. So, yep. And it, they weren't looking at you as a salesperson, but rather they were looking at you as a friend. Uh, and, you know, that, they were happy to vouch for me um, to other doctors. And it just started to become a network effect. You know, they don't tell me as sales, they don't refer to me as a salesperson. They just tell tell others that hey, here's this awesome IT guy that I know. Uh, you know, if you have any problems, you can speak to him. But right now, he's trying to do something even cooler. You know, so you might yeah, you might amazing. find it more interesting if you speak to him. It's just you know, it's just amazing. You get you're bringing tears to my eyes. Like you know, this is just so awesome what you guys did. And it's it's people think that you know that. I mean, when they talk about lean startup and customer development, they think that every test has to be about testing your product, testing viability. But there's also like tests for trust, right? Absolutely. Like, can you go into that doctor's? Can I get them to? Can I help them solve any problem? And will they trust me? Um, and you guys prove that out. And it's, it's just, it's, it's not as much about the product, but it's the relationship. And will these people believe in you that you're going to be there and up at 3 a.m. when their problems go down? Are you just someone else? Ready to, to try to get money out of their pocket and throw some another piece of IT junk on their desk that they don't want to use and they don't know how to use. It just distracts them from you with patience. Yeah, that's oh, Chris, you're making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we as a company, we believe in being humans first. So yes. even before selling, we just want to treat everyone as a human first. And if our our ultimate uh, you know vision is if our product is good, it will sell itself. So, build relationships, and the product will sell if it's good. Simple as that. Tell me a little bit more. It's like once you started helping, like how did that change the traction and momentum in the company, and like introduction? Like, what, how did that? Like, what? How did that put you in better position to be where you are today? Um. So what happened was, uh, you know, we did more than that. I mean, we we so we offered help. We we gave advice on marketing, so things that mattered to them, where people were ripping them off. Yeah. Uh, people, rather, we decided to just give them free advice. You know, we if it was a, a quick fix, we fixed it for free. Um, and we, at the end of like a conversation, we always gave them like chocolates uh, nice. with a personal note saying thank you. Uh, it was all written handwritten notes because you know no one yeah. in the industry you know gives handwritten notes. Yes. Uh, and we just felt that no one in the IT industry has done this before, and it's just human to do it. Um, so you know. From there, what happened was there are two there are two gatekeepers in in any any clinic. Uh, one is one is the admin staff, and the other um, is the doctors. Yeah. So what happened was once you once you 
treat the admin staff as humans. They have a community which they mingle with, so they they talk to everyone, and you know, you know, people know that you're not salespeople anymore. And then the doctors, they know that you're not selling, and they they want to help their friends. So what happens is they pretty much just like what you're doing. Even like you know, so well the first product they gave us honest advice and failed. So yeah. you know, that was reality. That's fine. The second product, you know, they loved it. So what happened was. Um, every week, I would just get introductions from other doctors, who, uh, to introduction to other doctors uh, from the doctors we spoke to before, and you know they remember us. That's the thing. So yeah. you know, we don't have to do anything anymore. And, like suddenly, I got a call saying, "Hey, Krish, there's this clinic. They're having the same problem. You might want to go speak to them." Um, and they know that I'm going to do any hard sales. And so, in our team right now, we have no salespeople, and on average, we get like one referral a week or two. Nice. Uh, just coming in by word of mouth, and mind you, we don't have like you know we haven't deployed in more than five clinics. Yeah, I think that's amazing. Yeah, so it's it's just through word of mouth. And that's I mean, this is a very very hard industry to get traction in. Like it's it's very hard to get word of mouth in doctors because they don't they don't even talk to they don't even trust each other half the time. Right? <laughs> Yeah, wow, that's fantastic. You know, I, it's it reminds me of something I did when I first launched So Helpful. I went and got, uh, I went and subscribed to every blog of my early customers, and every time they wrote anything, I went and commented, I went and tweeted out. Like, I just wanted to prove, like, like I'm there for you, right? <laughs> I mean, it, you you reach a point where there's only, you know, there's only so much you can keep up with as as a founder. And I'm sure you've you've gotten to the point now that you've got traction. You can't you can't do as much for every single one as you'd like to be able to. Yeah. Um, um, and it's you know the point of that. But um, but you know that's it's just part of growing a business, right? You kind of go from a product to business, and you're in that traction. Yeah. So well, Chris, this is uh, this is this is super super helpful. So uh, two final questions for you is um, the first one is. Advice you would give any entrepreneurs out there who are like they're they're just starting their accelerator program in a couple of weeks. They got a good idea. They're fired up. They're you a year ago. You could sit down with you and a year ago, put your arm around him and say, "Young man, I've got some words for you." What would yeah. you say? Um, well, I would say follow follow what the book says, and that's very very hard to do for for a lot of us, uh, including me. It took some time for us to figure it out. And by the book, I mean the Lean Sarah book. You yeah. need to keep your ears open, um, and that is something we we always have this confirmation bias thing. We want to hear what we want to hear. Yeah. Um, so the best thing to do is to just put down all assumptions, um, and and you know just listen listen to the customers, and then come right. down, go back go back home and do the analysis. Don't do the analysis when you listen to customers. Just keep all ears and listen and listen and listen. Um, that's how I would say. Customer development is the most important part when it comes to the accelerator. If you don't get that right. We'll probably spend a lot of time in that, right? Yeah. Yes, right. <laughs> Customer development, most important about accelerator. I love that. More important than making sure you got the nicest demo day presentation, right? Oh, thank you. That was, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> demo day, yeah. That the accelerators will help you out, <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. Right. right. Yes. yes. Yeah. Exactly. That all works itself out. Yeah. Great. Right. We're getting a little bit of echo here. here. So, Chris, I'm not sure if it's coming through, but. Um, uh, is that, no, your is that your speaker? Testing? Yeah. Is it working now? Uh, I'm getting a little bit echo, a little feedback from your speaker, I think. Uh, hang on, let me just get my earphones. You know what? I'm just going to ask you a quick question, and then we'll wrap it up. So the final question is about Clinify. It's like, who should you know? We refer you to what kind of people we run into. We should tell them to check out your company. You know, what kind of businesses should be going to Clinify? Um, so we are always. Hoping to speak to doctors, um, private doctors, surgeons, or anyone in the in the health informatics field. Um, so if you know, we're always open to speaking to them. If you know anyone who, who you could refer to, that'd be great. Great, excellent. Great. I'm gonna send you know, an email follow up. How can I help you, Kevin? You this well, is tough enough. enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? Keep, keep doing what, what you're doing. Be uh, successful. successful. Thank you, sir. <laughs> If you if you need anything from us anytime, yeah. Any thanks a lot, Chris. I appreciate that. Now you guys are great. And next time I'm in Singapore, we'll look you up. Sounds good. All right. Take care. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you. Bye.